Hello, hello, and welcome, everybody. How are you doing? We are doing much better. I see Barbara joined us. Hello, hello. Um, oh, whoa, I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> what a way to start we, the we life. That, yep, that would have been funny for us. Wow. So, <laughs> how was your weekend? <laughs> how was my weekend? Um, the only story I have... Oh, wait, Dwayne's got a cough. Hang on, I'm muting myself for a sec. Okay. So, my weekend was good. We awesome. went to a hotel. Again. <laughs> we needed it. We Very so needed good. it. But we went to um, Eshwabana, which is over by Green Bay. They had their citywide. And so we went and did that. But we went and hung out with JRKR and her husband. Awesome. All Friday. It was so fun. Very cool. That's terrific. Yeah, that's where I got more color-changing candles <laughs> was yeah. during that time. <laughs> that's very good. All right, so what happened with you this weekend? Um, the only story I have is is complaining. Um, uh oh, do, do you want to hear it? That's what we're here for. <laughs> okay, first, you know how I told you about my that I saw my massage therapist at the park with her vicious puppy that attacked me, right? No, I. Don't remember, you don't remember that. that. When I say puppy, he's like 50 pounds. Um, oh. And yeah, this dog came tearing after me. He had too much lead on his rope. And he attacked and he got clawed up my thigh, my uh, my left thigh. And all I got was, you scared him. And you don't remember this story. No. And you probably yeah, she, told me, was I tired? <laughs> I'm sure. But all she did was go down a list of excuses and and try to tell me what a good doggy is. And it's like, no, uh, it's it, that's oh, not a good dog. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. You just then, had to say that part. <laughs> and it came yeah, back. Yeah, if you have a dog that attacks someone, they are not a good dog. No. So then later that week, I text her and I'm like, Dwayne tested positive for COVID. And we are all sick. She I, want she wanted me to get out of my deathbed to go get tested for her. And so I just said, I have it. I, I lied to her. I said, yeah, when we got tested, I have it. <clears throat> and because, yeah, I'm going to do that for her. I, you know, it, the, I'm guessing the rule is along the lines when you're a massage therapist that if you have a client that says they've been exposed, that, that that's enough that you're supposed to take precaution, right? That's a guess. All right. So then, um, oh, yesterday, uh, I had an appointment today for 1230. It was, uh, you know, the uh, uh, just an automatic thing. And I had said yes, that I'd be there. And then I was like, oh, yeah, doing surgery. So yesterday I texted her and said, hey, I can't make it tomorrow. Now, keep in mind that she has rearranged the schedule many times. She um, bailed on me two hours early one time. I uh, There's been multiple times I have waited for her, and I have never even been late, never missed an appointment, year and a half. So I text her Sunday, yesterday, saying, today, sorry, Dwayne has surgery. I'm not going to be able to make it. She wanted to charge me $30. For a cancellation wow. fee. Now my appointment was for at 12.30. I text her at 1.15 yesterday. So 45 minutes. I, I text her at 23 hours and 15 minutes. And she said that since it was less than 24 hours, that she was going to have to charge me $30. I said, sorry, I do not have the money. Wow. So guess who is shopping for a new massage therapist? You are? Dwayne says that when you add all of that up, she just sounds like a self-centered millennial. 
Yeah. The, the, For sure. The things that other people, um, you know, revolve their life around her. No. Mm -mm. No. So. John John says, I would tell this lady in the nicest possible way to pound sand. I have never heard that expression before. <laughs> No, I've never uh, expressed it before. You know, one of the best things that I've ever done for my children is to tell them that no, the world does not think you're special. I, I used to tell them when they're kids, I'm like, the only person who thinks you're special is your mama. Don't be thinking other people think that. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Yeah. And so my kids do not expect the world to think they're special. Well, okay. Jeremy says technically. By this, according to the state of Utah, he's special because, you know, he's got his diagnosis of autism. <laughs> well, I guess that's one way to, to twist it. <laughs> yes. so, All right. Let's welcome some more people in yes, chat. Like we said hello to Barbara. Hello. Hello. We have Denise. Hello. Hello. Tonight we are going to talk about. Yes. We are going to talk about. Um, oh, that's Dwayne's shoulder. There. Stress response or mental health disorder. Um, remember, neither one of us are professionals. We're not doctors. We're not counselors. We're just people that live every day with mental health struggles. But I thought that we could talk about this article that I came across. And it's going to show. I'll pull it up so I can show everybody. But. Is talking about how kind of how to tell the diff, you know, like not really tell the difference, but like if you suspect you have mental health, but you're not sure, or it could be stress. So we'll just we'll go through it, um, and then we'll talk about it. So that is our discussion tonight. Um, hello, Perlini, how are you doing? Uh, we have John Jones. Hello, hello. Um, have we had John Jones on before? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll probably ask that again. <laughs> um, it's been a little bit, but he's here. Um, he has been here before. There's JRKR. I had so much fun with her and her husband. We did. So, you know how I always tell you guys that Jasmine likes to talk? Mm -hmm. She found the perfect talking partner, JRKR's husband. Ah, awesome. so so it was the citywide for Abshwabana, Ab and I hope I say that right because sometimes it it comes out right and then sometimes it doesn't. Um, but um, JRKR drove her truck, and we followed behind JRKR when there was the clusters of yard sales and Jaslyn and JRKR's husband walked to each yard sale and they were talking. I was like, I hope she doesn't drive him nuts. JRKR is like, nope, he loves to talk too. <laughs> that is great. That's wonderful. So, and she absolutely, absolutely adores JRKR and her husband. So wonderful. it was the first time she got to meet them. And man, let me tell you, she was in her glory. She really was. So thank you for the phenomenal hangout on Friday. That was so that, cool. You know, uh, that right there is the best mental health treatment of all. Is it having is. a good time with someone whose company you enjoy that is uplifting and um, if you have fun, you know, for me to, um, if I meet somebody new and I learn things, it's, and they make me laugh, that's double bonus right there. Well, we've hung out with JRKR and her husband before. We went to, we met um, at Pizza Ranch in, over in Appleton. And they're just, they're phenomenal people. They really are. So if anybody out there is in Wisconsin and you get a chance to meet JRKR in person and her <laughs> husband, you're going to fa instantly fall in love with them because they are just so cool. And so it was pretty awesome. That is um, wonderful. Hi, Sharon. How you doing? Hey, Sharon. Good. Yeah. 
Quack, Jared, here. Here. these are the candles that I bought at that one yard sale that I got really excited. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even negotiate so how the much, price. Yeah, how much did you pay for them then? Three dollars, and they were brand new, Eight. never opened. Very good. Can't complain about that. Mm -mm. And I, I just, That's I kind of want to like get a collection, so I'm, I'm looking for them at like yard sales, Goodwill, um, the thrift stores, stuff like that, because they're way cheaper <laughs> that way oh, than sure. they yeah. are, you know, buying them. But, but I love them, and I didn't, I did have them changing colors, but they kind of got weird. It's magical. Yeah, so they're they're cool. I like. Hey, them. I'm in my jail cell, as Dwayne had <laughs> said, because you know, I'm once again sitting in bed. I am doing much better. Uh, reason why? Because let's see, the first time Dwayne and I were near death. Second time, um, I was still so exhausted, and this time, you know, now that I'm done talking about myself. It, I'm sitting next to Dwayne, who had surgery today. Yeah, yeah my husband, my husband has surgery, and I choose to complain about something in my life. <laughs> How is he doing from his surgery? Um, he's grumpy. I remember if when Tommy had surgery. I think it's just a guy thing. So, um, hey, B. Davy, how you doing? I know there was a lot more people that came in. Um. Let's see. I saw something in here. Let me find it real quick. Um, Barbara said she went to an online funeral and sang in church. Huh, awesome about nice. singing in church. I'm sorry for your loss for the yeah. funeral. I went to an outdoor funeral, which I've been to those before, but it's been since COVID. And it was a bring your own chair. And I didn't know that. And I was in wedge heels. <sighs> Got to think about what you're wearing to a funeral. Wait, hold on. Um, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to catch up, but it's not working because <laughs> it keeps keeps kicking me there, here, and there, and everywhere on here. Um, let's see. Um, I am trying to catch up, so. Uh, Perlini said, get another therapist. Yeah. Uh, we did address John Jones's comment about telling her nicely to pound some sand. Um, Dwayne, hello, Dwayne. Um, and he responds, that is precisely what we did. Yeah. All I, right. you know, it was funny because I had read the text from her and I was like, Dwayne, okay, I have to be the adult here. What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> Cause, you know those moments when you know you have to be an adult because someone, yeah, or at least just tactful because someone has to be, and you're like, and that's someone's supposed to be me. <laughs> I don't like being the adult. I hate it. I know, me too. <laughs> but you know, I'm put fifty is a year and a half away. Right. Uh, hello, Virginia. How you doing? I hope I said that right. I always end up butchering people's names and I apologize I'm way ahead of it in advance. Um, hello, Aunt Kelly. How you doing? Hey, Aunt um, Kelly. Let's see. You know, Aunt Kelly and I, everyone are the same age, but you know, since Destiny calls her Aunt Kelly, then I call her Aunt Kelly. <laughs> She's everybody's Aunt Kelly in chat. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's how everybody knows her. <laughs> yes. I probably shouldn't be eating crackers, but I haven't eaten dinner yet, so I apologize. Yeah, um, our our dinner's in the oven. It won't be ready for two hours. Oh, so we got two hours. <laughs> it's a frozen lasagna, you know, the Stouffer's oh, one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Natalie put it in there for us. So. Oh, but, that's um, nice. Yeah. Her daughter is a, a sweetheart, isn't she? I've only talked to her online but yes your daughter is very much a sweetheart she is and she you know she takes care of me and she takes care of tommy and you know it's it's nice because i mean even though she's 13 you know she doesn't let me lift anything and especially with the after the mesh was put in she definitely wasn't letting me carry anything and so you know she's always mom 
don't do that. Mom, I got this. Mom, mom. <laughs> I'm like, hi, honey, I love you. <laughs> so but yeah she is she's and she loves meeting people she is such our she is so our social butterfly thank god she got that from tommy and not me because i'm not much of a social butterfly <laughs> i love meeting new people but i'm usually quiet when you first meet me until i get comfortable with you and then then you're in trouble <laughs> and then i talk like crazy <laughs> Dwayne used to be that way Oh. And he, he, oh yeah, he's a social moth, he says. <laughs> and, but, um, oh, that's, so tomorrow marks 25 years since Dwayne and I met. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> that's a damn long nice. time, isn't it? That is a very long time. <laughs> yep, we've, we've been together more than half my life. Okay, Aunt Kelly, tonight's topic, we'll start here shortly. I just want to kind of rush through or get through chat real quick. Um, is stress response or mental health disorder? So that's the name of the article that I found. And so we will be discussing that tonight. Um, JRKR says, it is my initials and my husband's initials, which is cool. Um Perlini says those are expensive in the store. Yes, they are. The candles are for sure. Um, Perlini said, where to go? Where to go? Um, here we go. Uh, you look and sound better, healthy. Uh, Heather, I was going to say healthier. <laughs> Thank you. I am slowly, slowly getting better. Yeah. Um, the funeral had a 30 person limit, so just watched it streaming. Okay. Good idea. Um, Perlini says, I wish I was 49 and know what I know now. I just hate hot tamale <laughs> tamales. <laughs> that, that's I, great. I am glad that um, I know what I know now. Um some things I wonder if I really needed a to pay such a high price to learn the lesson. Who's to say? Yeah. Virginia says, Pinky, I'm better on talking with my words on here. I hear you. It's easier to type for me than to talk nine times out of ten because I, I tend to jumble my my words. And so um, it kind of stinks, but I do it anyway. Sharon. I got um, to learn to get past it. So it was one of my resolutions for this year. So, um, and then it's Count Countess April's birthday today. Hope she's having a great time. Happy birthday to Countess April. Yes, happy birthday, April. Perlini says, happy anniversary and belated birthday, Dwayne. Yeah. Uh, He's been 50 for a couple of months now. You know what 50 means? 50 means colonoscopy. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. And his father's family, that they get polyps. He's not oh, responding. Boy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump into our topic since now I have um, everybody in chat that came in. So we are going to share the screen and get on topic. All right, so the, the article is called Stress Response or Mental Health Disorder, How to Tell the Difference. Um, it was published February 18th or last updated February 18th, to, uh, 2021. And the article is by Nancy Lebrom. And the link is down in the description below. Um, and this is by no way a, used to diagnose yourself. Um, this is just an article that I came across that I thought was very interesting. And, figure, you know, especially during this time now, um, we have so many unknowns going on 
And so this is kind of like if you suspect that you have a mental health disorder or it could be stress, you know, this will kind of help you um, decide which doctor to talk to, your primary doctor or um, about, you know, getting finding ways to help with stress or, you know, having your primary doctor hook you up with um, a psychiatrist. So, um and I learned too in this article that stress and mental health are pretty similar. Um, a lot of the symptoms are pretty similar, mm -hmm. and so that was that was actually quite intriguing to to learn when I was reading this. And so I'll just read it out loud, um, and then we'll stop and talk in spots. So if you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to put a bunch of question marks before and after your questions so that I can see them in chat. Um, so here we go. Uh, when you feel stressed, your body reacts to it like an um, outside trigger, such as an intruder. Your body processes, processes hormones or produces hormones that make you sweat, breathe faster, and tense your muscles, ready to take action against now, I did read this before. Um, you looking at the word? Yeah. Here, I put my glasses on. Oh, you let's see. Where is it? Anxiety, depression. No, it was up here. Perceived threat? Yeah, perceived threat. Um, and then it says... Um, it's a normal response to negative, uh, oh, horrible at Let's see. Reading. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, stigma. Or Stimuli. Stigma. Yeah. So the mental disorders like anxiety and de um, depression can have similar symptoms, but they don't go away even when there's no outside stressor. So with stress... And with mental health, it's right. And exactly, Barbara. And that's what um, I did do some other research as well. So the symptoms um, that she describes in here is pretty accurate. So that's why I had um, <clears throat> thought to bring this article up. Um, even though she isn't a healthcare professional, she even states in there that, you know, she's not. So, um, but it was just, it was a really good, interesting read. Um, down yeah. here in the uh, similarities and differences in stress and mental health disorders. Um, let's see. There's like, they say there's three different um, buckets uh, that they classify for stress. You got the routine stress from daily responsibilities like work deadline or fighting with a partner, stress from a life event such as divorce or a job loss, and then traumatic stress as a reaction to events like nat natural disasters, war, assault, or a pandemic. Um, and so, I mean, there's a lot of information here, which is really awesome. Um, so these are the, the ones that I really wanted to like focus on was signs of stress, uh, which include feeling overwhelmed and unable to overcome difficulties, trouble sleeping, problems with memory and concentration, feeling nervous or anxious, irritability, feeling burned out, um, and di digestive troubles. Um, signs of mental health disorders like anxiety or depression include similar symptoms to stress, but also... Um, you have withdrawing from people in uh, society, feeling hopeless and unmotivated, difficulty making decisions, anger and rage, feelings of guilt and suicidal thoughts. And, you know, it, it's when you look at the, the signs and stuff, you know, all of these are very concerning, no matter They're if all it's stress or mental health. It's, it all plays havoc on your body. This is also um, survival mode. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so 
you know, if you feel any of these or have any of these going on, please reach out to your doctor. It's very important because, you know, in here too, it was stating in, in another uh, mental health or uh, another article that I was reading that was from a doctor. They said that, you know, the longer stress can trigger mental health, but mental health also can you know can cause stress too but the thing is is what i find interesting that i didn't know is that the longer you have prolonged stress can trigger mental health oh yeah it can take years off your life you know yeah definitely mm -hmm. uh, mental health you know a long-term mental health issues um mess with your health mess with the way that you perceive the world right okay. yep right and so the the thing that um i want to stress above anything else is if you're struggling if you believe it's stress or if you believe it's mental health please reach out to your doctor they really they're there to help you um, Barbara says that she sees stress response as part of mental health. And it can be. It really can be. Hi, JC. How you doing? Um, hey, JC. And, and they do talk about it in the, the article, too. <clears throat> and that's, you know, the longer you're stressed, the more chances you can be. And it can put you know, weight on you, too. Yeah. What yeah, it's it's crazy and it's I don't want people to feel that um that they're 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 alone in it. And that was the whole point of doing the channel was, you know, I want people to know that they're not alone, that we're here and we're willing to talk, help, do whatever we can. Um, and also down in my, in the description as well, you know, I have my email address. If you guys, if anybody wants to reach out and need somebody to talk to, um, I have a whole bunch of, you know, different links to help. And I also have this, the suicide prevention hotline listed down below as well. Um, because stress can trigger all that it really can and it's it's yeah. scary to it was just something that i learned and it was very intriguing um hold on one second my daughter's standing here hold on now i gotta think of something clever to say my kids always told me i gave crappy advice i tried i think part of it is I would also try to show them that it wasn't the end of the world. And when you have teenagers, you're telling them what's going on. You're like, wait, it gets worse. They never appreciated that from me. Right. You know, and, and I mean, we've lived through it, but sometimes with kids, they have to learn the hard way because they won't grasp it. Well, and that is why... You know, I certainly wanted to protect my children, do the best I could to care for them. But right. if they had a failure due to their uh, lack of follow through, I let them experience that failure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some failures you'd say, well, let's take a look at this. Is this really a failure? Is this a learning moment? But sometimes, especially when they get to be teenagers and they screw up, um, and I don't want to say failure in a, a bad way, but it was like, yeah, you you didn't really, uh, that, <laughs> that one could have been done better. <laughs> right. So, but, um, but no, I think that's the problem, though, is too many people nowadays don't let their children experience what it's like to have to pick yourself up off the ground and keep going. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. And because that's tra in a safe place. Uh, if you know, if you can provide a safe home, L learning to pick yourself up is just practice for adulthood. Yeah, you have to learn. We all learn at some 
everything that we do, we all have to learn at some point. And some people never do. And some people don't learn from their mistakes, and then other people they do. And so, especially when it comes to kids, raising children, absolutely. Oh, jeez, yeah. And it's absolutely. It's stressful. Yeah, raising children is very stressful, and you have to find your own rewards. Very seldom do children say, "Wow, mom, you are so awesome." Yeah, that that one is not a real common thing, especially when you have to be the bad guy and set limits because that's your job as a parent. Right, and <laughs> if you haven't had your children tell you at least once. That they hate you, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> no, my favorite one was always when my kids were around 14 and they'd be like, You don't even know me. And I would say, You don't even know yourself. Because <laughs> what 14 year old knows themselves? None. Very true. Very true. They want to be they want to be adults. And you know, and like, okay, so like with my kids, you know. My son, he causes a lot of stress with his behaviors, with the way he is. My daughter, she's great. I, you know, she's got a mouth, but what 13-year-old girl doesn't? Isn't she 14 now? <clears throat> oh, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. At the end of the Come year. Soon. I had to think for a okay, minute. Okay, end of the year. <laughs> At the end of the year, in November, she'll be 14. She's 13. Um, did I say 14 earlier? Yeah, you did. Okay, I meant 13. She no. turned 13 in November. Uh, See, I'm getting all sorts of confused with their ages because they're they're 18 months apart. Joey just turned 15. She just turned 13. She'll be 14 in November. And it's... <sighs> that's Isn't stressful in this home. Icky? Uh, What's that? 13 is icky. That's a horrible age. I feel sorry, kids that have to. <laughs> I can't wait to. Yeah, yeah, you have to survive if you're going to make it to adulthood, though. No, oh, yeah. Um, you know, she she does her her normal teen thing, but it's she doesn't cause any stress. Like our son does. And he's going to have to learn. Like he, like I said, he's 15. He'll be 16 um, in March. He's only got a couple years left. Yeah. Yep. And he's going to, he's going to be an adult. Mm -hmm. And. Have you thought have about. Uh. If you can get a, get a doctor on board, you can do a thing where they're still not, even though they turn 18, they're still not considered, like, uh, the consequences wouldn't be that of an adult. Like, if you can claim that they're not, like, mentally, emotionally competent enough to be uh, considered an adult, I I wish that Cheryl was on here. She could tell us about it. She is? Okay, Cheryl, tell us about that. Because she knows. Um, sometimes she and I share a brain. But, um, but yeah, I know there. I have no idea what the steps are to do that, though. It's a thought. If you feel like that his choices are still so poor that, and you're concerned about him, you know, getting in trouble on an adult level, something that perhaps you could look into. Yeah, we'll we'll talk after about that part. Um, I just don't know because with him, everything that we've tried, everything that we've done, everything that we've put into place doesn't seem to work for him. Yeah. Where I with agree. with Jaslyn, you know, you can go and you can tell her, um, you're not supposed to be doing that. Don't do that. And she'll stop. And Wow. I didn't have one of those. You can have. Something. 
Declare mentally incompetent by a doctor and get guardianship from the courts. Okay, yep, that's exactly what okay. I'm talking about. What is gains? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what the <laughs> word means either. Um, Perlini says, but also you can do, do, go buy a book. Um, at the end of the day, there are what, they are what they are going to do what they're going to do regardless. Yeah. And that's where we're at now with, with our son. Um, yeah. It's. And not punishing yourself for his choices by telling, you know, thinking that you're not going to parent because that's hard. And to separate, you know, like thinking, I, I really have done the best that I can. This is on them. Right. And that's the stressful part for me, for me and Tommy is the race the same way. Why are they completely different? Why is oh, one? All three of mine came with a needed a different handbook. I wish they each would have come into the world with it, but they didn't. Yeah. And, and so that, you know, that contributes a lot. That stress contributes a lot mm -hmm to my mental health absolutely and it deteriorates the more um the more he does the more stress it causes the more my mental health deteriorates yeah and and i love him i love him very much i gave birth to him he's my son he will always be my son But I don't, we don't know what the next step is with him sure, and the stress yeah. and the headaches and stuff like that. So yeah. um, just let them out into the real world, but leave the back door open for support. And that's, you know, and that's the thing. I, I we've tried so many different, um, what are they called? Methods? <sighs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, techniques? Techniques, methods with him. Um, we were, and I've taken parenting class when they were little. Um, I did, I took um, trauma-informed parenting class. Um, we went and did, a, uh, me and Tommy were in a, a, a class where, um, and we got certified to recognize um, suicide and people, uh, mostly kids, so that, you know, we, we know the signs. So then, you know, we can get direct them into the way that they need to go um, to get help. So, um, so it's, but everything that I've done, everything that we've done, None of it makes sense with what we go through with him. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very stressful. Um, just, this new phone has the worst auto autocorrect that was supposed to say someone not. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Hmm. My two kids are nothing like me. Or how I thought they'd be. Yeah, for sure. That's, you know, Jasmine is, looks like my mom, has Tommy's attitude, and is the nicest, sweetest person you could ever meet. Just don't mess with her family. <laughs> you, you know, something that I have observed now that my children are adults. Now, a lot of this for my mother was her generation and for thousands of generations before her, where um, I think that she's old enough that when we were kids that they people still believed that you could mold your children. Um, I believe the best you can do is set a good example, ultimately. That is the only thing you can do is set a good example. But, um, because I don't look at, I never looked at it as that I actually raised my children. I more just tried to, steer them but um so and I don't blame my mom you know like I said it's her generation plus it's not she never wanted anything bad but uh <clears throat> she wanted her three daughters to to be young ladies 
I didn't really meet that mark. But um, now the funny thing is, uh, for my children, I always told them, you figure out who you are. Because that that's ultimately, that that's on, up to you to do. You need to figure out who you are. Now, just personally, that's part of why I didn't push religion on them much. You know, they were exposed mm -hmm. to it. But um, anyway, as adults, my children are more like me than I'm like my mother. And do you see what I'm getting at? It's just kind of funny. But I'm very proud of my children. And um, I've asked them, you know, did I stifle you in any way? Because I never wanted... Like I said, you have to put out guidelines, but I never wanted to stifle them from being who they are. For example, when my youngest son, one time he's like, so what if I was gay? I'm like, whatever. You're not. I've seen you checking out girls. And he's like, I was just wondering. And that was the conversation. That, that right. was, you know, whereas my parents were homophobes. <clears throat> so um, total generational differences. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing too, like the stress can be overwhelming. And after I read that article, it, it didn't make sense to me. It really did about, you know, cause Tommy has pointed out your mental health is, is going downhill. Yeah. And so that I thought that article was pretty informative. And yeah, then it, long stress is totally yeah. damaging on every level. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I did put up the, the down at the bottom, the scrolling, yeah. um, the national suicide prevention hotline number. Um, and then I will, I have a couple other ones, um, banners in here that uh i'm gonna switch to as well a uh, few quotes um let me find it oh and then we have the uh safe place mental health uh mental health safe place facebook group um Am I that even one, in that? you should be you should be an admin <laughs> Yeah, I get onto Facebook so seldom that, because did yeah. I even tell you, but so it was six months ago, approximately, that I watched this thing about um, social media and the addiction and just what that, how that can screw with your mind. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I'm going to try for a week and really cut back, like cut back to nothing. And then the week came and went, and I'm like, huh. My life is not lost any quality at all. Right. I know. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Social media can make you feel horrible about yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll check in, especially if, like, I know a birthday is coming up or I know something is going on in someone's life and I want to check on them. I'll do that. My brother, um, puts hilarious things on all the time. So sometimes I'll get on there just to laugh at his memes. And, um, but really, yeah, judging yourself by social media, you know, that is a stress that we haven't evolved to handle. Now that, that there's a theory of mine. I'm not saying there's anything behind this, but I think in a lot of ways <laughs> we have traded, um, now, there's been crazy people since the beginning of time, but in some ways we have traded a level of, of mental health is stress for convenience of modern day life. Because think about it. If you had to go out and work a farm every single day of the year, you don't have time to sit around and think about your problems. You got to be there doing it. Yeah. And I've heard that, like I said, that our brains have not evolved with, um, say you did pl plow a field and at the end of the day, you and your horse took a step back and took a look at your hard work and you could see it, it was tangible, you did it. And now if like you do 
you know, Cheryl's husband, he's an ITT guy, IT guy, sorry. Um, uh, you know, that, that's not a tangible thing for him. And, um, and all of this happened so quickly that um, we need, I think we need to recognize it for what it is and, um, and know when to take a step back of, you know what? I, I don't even have Twitter personally or Instagram or I just don't care. So in my life, I don't think there's any less for it. Yeah, social media has um, become. Of we're on doing social media now, but yeah, but it's become like a big major thing for everybody. Great. So we were in Appleton. Yeah, we were in Appleton this weekend, and I don't know how many people we saw um, driving down the road, uh, main highway. Um, Appleton is their phone. City. They were on, they were like this as they were driving. Oh, that's my like, Yeah. Get off your phone. It's not a telephone booth. You're going to kill somebody. I do have Bluetooth in my car, so that's nice. Um, I need to, oh, I should have to wait and figure out how to do that because, you know, I'll never figure it out because we just got new phones. So I need to have him figure out how to Bluetooth. What do you call it? Google Maps from my phone through the car. You need to do that in mine. So it comes through the car. Yeah, I don't. You haven't done that with my phone. <laughs> uh -oh. You should have seen. <laughs> you should have seen him swearing away as he was trying to clean up my laptop earlier. The crap that I stuffed into. What is it? One drive. I was like at the limit, and I don't even know how it got there. Oh wow! And I, wow. I'm really bad. I'll find some. I like I find a picture. I'm a bit of a picture collecting whore, and um, I'll just stuff it anywhere, any file, whatever. And then he's like, "What have you done?" I'm like, "I don't know. I can't be held responsible. This is electronics." Yeah, I don't get to do very well with electronics either. <laughs> I thought about how far back could I go. And because, you know, my life is pretty cushy. I definitely had, would have to have indoor plumbing, hot water. And never be asked to cook even then. I could survive that way. Oh, and I'd have to always be warm. It'd have to be somewhere tropical. Yeah, no, I don't think I could have survived before now. Uh, yeah, our, our weather is going crazy, too, which is another stress that we have um, because of the fact that when it gets cold, Tommy goes down. Yeah, the arthritis, totally. The arthritis. Yeah. yeah. And so... Arthritis is like a barometer, too, like if the, um, what do you call it, humidity change, I... I do believe. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he can tell, like you can tell when it's going to rain because his body will start stiffening up and stuff like that. And his joints don't want to move correctly. And so. Parametric um, pressure. That's what we're talking about. Yes. There we yes. go. That's the word. That's what um, Dwayne. Oh, thank you, Dwayne. <laughs> um, you know, so, I mean, we have a lot of stress in our life. I mean, there's just everyday stress. And sometimes, you know, some stress is worse than other stress. There's stress that you can live with and be okay. Then there's other stress that literally will make you feel like you're losing your mind. You know, I will tell you, in 10 years, it's going to be better. As far as, um, you know, we have stress with our youngest son being uh, high functioning autism. It's not the autism that's that's the problem. It's the ODD, the opposite, oppositional defiance disorder. And I'm sure that that's what your son has as well, as, along with the rest of things. And 
Uh, yeah, that can drive you crazy. But at this moment in my life, I'm like, okay, am I blessed or have I just paid my dues? Because um, life still happens. But like I said, you know, if you were to talk to me when Dwayne and I met, my left, my life was a disaster. And I, we both have been through bumps and bruises over the years and learned a lot of lessons. And we've reached the point where we totally know each other, you know. <laughs> we've gotten to know each other over 25 years. The kids are grown. And um, we've just kind of plateaued. I don't even care if it's boring. I love it. <laughs> and, you know, when my kids were young, nothing was more stressful than the 11 years. Um, that I had all three kids at home because um, Ian got married at 18 and he was uh, seven and a half when Jeremy was born. So um, that man, that took time off my life expectancy. But uh, <clears throat> up until just a couple of years ago, I had huge stress in my life. And so this is brand new to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to let myself enjoy it and so keep in mind there um i've been told the only mormons say this i don't know this too shall pass i've heard that this too shall pass or everything so, yeah. happens for a reason no um, no it does not i i do not <laughs> believe that one maybe for some people but my life has just been full of so much bullshit no <laughs> Yeah, Tommy's like, he doesn't believe in that either. If, yeah, if that is your life, you are blessed, man. That, yeah. And then there's the rest of us who just have to deal with the crap that's flung at us. And there is no reason. True that. <laughs> that's my rant about that one. Uh, JC says, we went through the exact same thing with our two boys. Uh, the two girls are totally opposite. Um, sometimes all that stuff doesn't do anything with a stubborn mind. Oh, let me tell you, very stubborn, very stubborn. And um, Barbara says... Barbara says, when my daughter graduated, I graduated from mommy to consultant. Cons okay, that's what yeah. I thought, but I didn't. Yeah. I was trying to sound it out in my head. For me, it started with my kids um, somewhere between um, 14 and 16, where um, something that I was really proud of with each of my children, including Jeremy, who was a late talker. Kid didn't start talking until he was four. But... Um, I was told with all three of my kids that they had very high comprehension of language. And um, so I would like to take some credit for that and think that it's because when they were young, I talked to them age appropriate. I talked to them about everything from the day I brought them home from the hospital. And, um, and then somewhere between 14 and 16, depending on the child, I went from talk, 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 and listening more. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to do is to listen more. Um, but my daughter talks so much, and and is it anxiety just, induced? I don't know. I don't think so. She just ever since she learned how to talk, she was like almost five when she started talking, and she hasn't shut up Stop. since. <laughs> Because yeah, it could it could be a sign of stress, anxiety. Yeah, and and it wouldn't be surprising with everything that goes on here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, with her brother and stuff, and so, but she does. She just sometimes she just like talks to hear herself talk, also, and so um, it, a lot of the stuff doesn't make sense to me. So. I try to listen, but I'm usually in the middle of doing something. And when she's like, mom, mom, mom. So she does talk to Tommy a lot more than she does me. Um, but I don't know how to relate to her. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think maybe you haven't been through a life with her in the past? 
What she do you mean? Knew, well, you know, I have my other rant that when people have their gender reveal parties, <laughs> I'm like, first of all, A, how do you not know what your baby is from the moment of conception? I knew. B, no one cares. The parents care. The grandparents care. Nobody else cares the gender of your child. Trust me, I don't care. Anyway, I feel that I have been through many lifetimes. Not that my children are necessarily my children, but I feel like I have spent more than this lifetime with this children. Whether it was in the before life, you know, wh whichever religion wins out, whichever belief system wins out, my children were a part of my life before now. And they will continue to be. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure I'm what it is. I, I don't know um, about that part of it. I just, there's some things I can relate with her, but there's other things. Like, she's a social butterfly. Never been like that. And so I don't know how to relate to her in that sense. Yeah, there's lessons to be learned from our children. Yeah. If we, if so, we, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I've learned a lot from my children. I'm getting there. I'm slowly Good. getting there. Good. But it, I mean, we have to learn together. So that's, that's the fun thing about her being a teenager now, even though she, she's got the teenager mouth, but all in all, she, she's phenomenal. She really, really is. And I just wish I could relate to her more. And a social you know, aspect it's, it's then another thing. Give it five years. And yeah. Yeah. But I think too is my mom, when I was a teenager, her age, my mom was gone all the time. And so when I became an adult, it was easier to relate to my mom and talk with my mom. And I'm hoping I'm not repeating that pattern because <laughs> I am yeah. here. Yeah, but yeah, my mom worked two jobs my whole childhood. Uh, and but I'm the only one who got to know my mother because I'm the youngest. And so everybody else left, including my father, which was a good thing. Um, I never bonded with my father, so I was just happy that he was gone. And I am the only one of my mother's children who got to know her as a person before adulthood. So when I was still a teenager, I got to know her as a person. A huge, huge amount of that is the fact that I'm the youngest and my mother's parenting drastically changed between my oldest, because my oldest sister is 12 years older than I am. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just 11? I don't remember. It's just 11 years. Don't, we're not going to make her any older. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, we have uh, some comments in chat. We um, haven't said, have hello? We said hi to Susanna. Susanna? No, not uh -huh. yet. I did say hi to her in chat, but um, but I wanted to, uh, I, I leave where I left off. I try to leave the comment up so that I can go back to it. Mm -hmm. So, hello, Susanna. Welcome, welcome. Um, Let's see. Hello, Christy. Caffeinated Christy's here. Hello, hello. Uh, Thrift Hunter. Hello, hello. He says, hello. Uh, hey, everyone. Hope you're do all doing well. Had a horrible weekend, but I'm hanging in there. Thank goodness for Zoloft. What's going on, Thrift Hunter? Do you need to talk? Let I, I've us taken know. Zoloft. Then that one. Yeah, um, that, that one turned semi a zombie. I think that made, yeah, I took it before I met Dwayne. I think it turned me into a zombie, turned Dwayne into a zombie. Some people it works. Oh, um, Helene says, consuming. yes. <laughs> what did I say that showed how old, that I'm getting old? What, which, what, which comment, which, which rant was it? <laughs> 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 was it? <laughs> uh, you made him laugh. And when you're talking about his, I, tech stuff. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Perlini says it was in the 30s here last oh, night. Yeah, it's the chip. It's spring. Weather's changing. Yeah. yeah. First world problems. There are so many things that we get caught up in that if you take your time to take a step back and assess 
And it's just like, you know what? This, this isn't something that's into the world. This is something that can be dealt with. And mm. that you have to learn how to do that though. Right. No teenager knows how to do that. Well, and for me, like with my stress and stuff, when I come on on Monday nights, um, not only does this help me with my mental health, it also helps me with my stress. And so um, we're saving lives by doing this. I hope so. Yes, for sure. Glad that is definitely. <laughs> you know, that's what, one of the greatest, and you're still at least a decade out. One of the greatest things is when your child is an adult and does say thank you. And that is, that's the greatest gift a child can give their parent. My, my daughter says thank you. And <laughs> I don't know if it's the same thing, but she does say thank you. And that's, you know, I mean, we have really good times. And then there's times where I just want to pull my hair out with her, you know. Oh, yeah, but it's yeah. not. I have the daughter. Yeah. It's. It's not like, okay, so let me see how to make this sound right. Because she is phenomenal. She really yeah. is. And people love her when they meet her. And she's got a spunky attitude. She's an adrenaline junkie. But all in all, you know, it's the typical mother-daughter mm -hmm. yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So that's where I feel like I want to pull my hair out. But in when I think about it, I love yeah. having a daughter because she's so much easier to raise than my son. <laughs> you know, when my daughter was like 16 or 17, she was going through a stressful time in her life. Um, there were external things going on, but she was not being nice. And I'm like, you're going to lose your boyfriend if you keep treating him this way. But she got so mad at me. Because I had said, you got to pull your crazy together. And mm. she was furious. And I said, you know what, honey? I'm your mother. It's my job to tell you when you need to pull yourself together. Trust me, the world is not going to be as kind. Right. And that right. is the greatest struggle between a parent and a same-sex child. Is because you have more influence on them than anybody else in their life anyone else will ever be in their life and so yeah sometimes you have to say you know what you're an asshole i'm not talking about little kids <laughs> no adult <laughs> kids <laughs> older kids <laughs> because um you know even you don't stop parenting just because they uh get older but sometimes when it, it's like said it's just like you know what i'm doing this out of love you're being a jerk Straighten up. Mm -hmm. Pull your head out. Right. For sure. Barbara says, they say that the safest place to live in the future is around the Great Lakes. It's cold there. I hate cold. Right now, I have a sheet and a blanket on me and my jacket. Duane is wearing shorts and has a fan blowing on him. Susanna says, learn the lesson fast from life throws it. Yeah. From life throws at you and on to the next one. You know, there have been moments in my life when I have been smart enough to watch someone else make a mistake and be like, like okay, I, I was witness to that. I'm learning it. And that's some of the one of the greatest things you can do for yourself is go ahead and learn by somebody else's skin knees. It doesn't come very easy. Um, but no, but if you can look around you and say, hey. I've learned a lesson from what you just did. Then that is nice. Not for them, but for me. <laughs> you know, I want my kids to grow up. I want to see what kind of adults they're going to be. But at the same time, I don't want them to grow up. I wanted, I, I miss them being little when things were not stressful. When, when, all I had to worry about is making sure they had a pull-up on so they didn't wet the bed, you know? And <laughs> now it's just like, 
and so much stuff has gone on in sure. our lives. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I Life know that that's some, you know, it contributes to it. Well, something that is but major huge. Yeah. First of all, I want to recognize what Susanna said. That uh, absolutely, I'd be balling too. That is wonderful. That is so. Yeah, like I said, that is the greatest gift a child can give their parent. And but um, what was it that I was going to say? That oh, okay, huge, huge, huge. Something you and I both are de have dealt with. We both have children. Well, I'll. We are, you are raising, I have raised children that were sired by other men than who are now in their lives raising them. You know, my oldest son's father was in his life and Ian is so much like his dad. Um, it's so freaky, but um, that, that one little thing is complicated as hell. Even if it's for, the overall better in your life. You know, I've always said, never have two unrelated alpha males in <laughs> the same household. <laughs> um, Dwayne and Ian butted heads. They're fine now. That's what I'm hoping for in the future. But we're all bumping heads with our son because he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to straighten out. He doesn't want to be a functioning part of our family. Yeah, maybe, and this is not, there's times when kids, as they become adults, have to hit the pavement hard. Yeah. You know, I knew a lady who, um, so her youngest and my oldest were in school together. And she told me a story about that they had tried and tried and tried with their oldest son to reason with him and to, you know, steer him right. And they were there in front of the judge once again. And she said, you know what? I'm sick of him. Throw the book at him. I'm not asking you to go light. Don't go light on him. He has to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> because, oh, yeah. you know, but, okay, here's another thing I'd heard. So I did this thing. I've never really talked about Power 90. This was a decade ago. Cheryl went to it. Uh, she didn't do the whole thing, but I took her to a night of it. But um, they're not around anymore. It was the self-improvement course. Anyway, um, a man in there, he sat down with all, each of his four adult children. He shared this in the class. Sat down with each of his four adult children. And when I believe it was his oldest son who had just gone through all kinds of bumps and bruises. And he, he asked him, he's like, what did I do wrong? And his son said, nothing. It's because of you that I was able to figure myself out. And it's like, whoo, like everyone had tears, you know? Because when you hear the story from oh, the wow. person, it has, it's much more impactful. But, um, but yeah, so like I said, the best you can do is set a good example, really, ultimately. Yes, for sure. Uh, JC says, we have so uh, said many times, we love all our kids, but we don't have to like them right now. <laughs> right? I have, I love both of my children very much. I just very, very strongly hate the behaviors that mm -hmm. yeah. my yeah. son does. And when you do give yourself permission without guilt of thinking you know what they're not a very likable person in this moment and i that's on them mm -hmm. for <laughs> sure for it's sure so easy to beat yourself up but Dwayne had just said something well what was it oh yeah teach your children how to make decisions that was a huge thing so when Dwayne and i met hang on i got a cough Okay, so Dwayne and I, uh, 25 years ago, I was living on my own, single, full-time working mother, basement apartment. I'm incredibly proud of myself for surviving that. Um, but there were so many things that I hadn't learned, basic things. And Dwayne, um, but I was an influence on him too. We were both young enough, you know, that that happened. But... Um, 
but decision making. Um, again, I think it's my mother's generation. We weren't really allowed to make decisions for ourselves, which is one of the greatest, greatest mistake, tragedy. Um, yeah, you want your children to learn how to make decisions, even if they're the wrong decision, but they have the safety net of you. Then, you know, like I said, these are learning steps, but yeah, they've got to learn how to make decisions in their lives. For sure. For sure. And it starts with little things like letting them go to the buffet by themselves and deciding what they want. That's how I had to do it. And because I was, you know, it's not that I was a control freak. I just wanted to make sure that they were safe. I did a lot of things for the kids when they were little. But it comes to a point where the older that they get, the older they get, the more you have to let them do things for themselves. Yeah. And you know, it's stressful for me too. And it's caused many, many years of stress is the crap that we have to deal with, with the biological. That is 15 years. No longer than that of crap. And so I don't know. It's, don't know how to, to fix it. I just don't know how to fix yeah. it. I, and so now I'm put in a situation where I have to decide what's best, what what's best for our family. And that's big stress. Yeah. I, and I'm also reading what you put up, uh, what JC said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he says, yes, Heather, the trips to court with our oldest. I can't count probation most of his teen years up to 18 and still to this day can't get it together. And that's what's mm -hmm. most likely going to happen with my son. You know, that's something, you know, we will ha have our own journeys we're on. I don't know with my other two kids. I can kind of foresee, knowing who they are, what their future could possibly hold. You can't take into account what life throws at you. Right. But for my youngest, I cannot foresee what his future is going to be on account of he's not taking responsibility for it. And I, something I had, I've always told my kids, pick a road by 30. You can change your path, but you have to have a road by 30 or you're just lost. Look at your mother. But, um, you know, you, you've got to decide who you are by then. Um, and the world is cold, cruel and indifferent. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I've always told them. Something that Dwayne had said is um, when you let your kids start making when they're you know younger, age appropriate, start letting them make decisions. Like and um then and then as they get older you let them do more and and more um yeah some of the things that we were a bit judged on which I don't care um with our kids where there were times where I instead of um, telling them as teenagers what to do I would just lay out pros and cons as I saw them and let them make the decision. Um, and <laughs> there were lessons learned. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, I just coughed so yeah. bad. <laughs> but one of the things that I knew about my kids is if I was to try and push a decision on them, it wouldn't have worked. That's why I would just lay out, uh, life as I saw it using my own past um, as an example, and then let them choose. JC said he is our oldest, 26 years, 26 year old now, three kids and walked away. Wow. You know, that's going to be a lifetime of regret. He said it infuriated um, him for a long time. Yeah, I don't know. That would be a level of anger. I don't know how I would get over it. 
Yeah. I, I wish at times and it gets more and more and I'm sure my kids biological will see this, that he would just stop with all the crap. Pull his because head he out. doesn't realize the impact that he has had in this situation that we are going through with yeah. my son. Yeah. And he wants to be the good guy. He wants to be the friend. He filled the, his head up with crap. And it sounds like he never grew up. Like he never chose that path by 30. No, his path is yeah. over. You know, um, men, between men and women, it's men who are the ones that are more likely to not have their personality really <laughs> set. That women come to more of a realization younger than men do, which we, you know, that's why women live longer than men. Mm -hmm. um, Susanna says, what about when your mom tells you you are damaged goods because you are not a virgin anymore and makes you marry him at 18 years old? That's Oy. a harsh lesson, man. Oof. Yeah. I'm so sorry you experienced that. You know, that was something else I was really realistic sucks. about. It took, you know, I, I made sure my kids knew about birth control. I had my oldest son before I married his father for, for just a little tiny time. Um, it's just life. Just life. Well, Susanna, you're not damaged goods. You no. are an awesome person. So always keep that in your head. It took me a long time to remember that I wasn't damaged. Um, because I heard that term, but I, it wasn't from my mom. It was from my ex-husband. Now, is this in talking about virginity? No, For this you? was just in or general. In general. He, he didn't use it for that. He he was abusive, which I've talked about before. Um, but him and his mother used to tell me that I was damaged goods all the time. Oh, I, I told Dwayne I was when we met. <laughs> you know, I knew I had a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I I was cracked. Or was it, um, I'm not broken, but you can see the cracks. Dwayne had plenty of cracks, too. <laughs> we're, none of us are perfect. No, and, no. But no, um, I think it's absolutely horrible to condemn your child for having a sexual partner before they get married i heck my son's you know my youngest is me 21 i'm like jeremy go take a shower get out of the house get a job you got to get laid like i said i'm done parenting or, or raising not done parenting done raising <laughs> but um but no that is something something you who are you to judge yeah, we're, we're not here. Teacher there's so many people. Control. Yeah, there's so many people that judge, but what they don't realize is they're not the judge. They're not the jury. There's nothing that they can do. Um, yeah. Yeah. What someone does with their sex life is nobody else's business. Right. Exactly. Prelini yeah. says, that's horrible, Susanna. You are yeah. an awesome, kind, caring person. And I agree 100%. I do. I. She says that we are all awesome. And so yeah. are you, Pearl. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about consenting adults. Uh, is it, What is the age of consent in Utah to have sex? Like, not with an adult, but with a... Isn't it 16, Cheryl? Like, if you're 16, can you consent to having sex with... Or if you're 17, can you have... Can, Sent to, yeah, sex with, with your sixteen-year-old boyfriend. Um, I have I, no idea. I yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, you know, 
I think I taught my children about birth control too well because, you know, we don't have any grandchildren. <laughs> I put the fear of God into my kids. You will not have children before you're married. Jaslyn's not even interested in having children. Um, we've had the talk. She wants to adopt, but she has too many things that she wants to do. She's not um, interested in dating. She's, she wants to do the things that she wants to do. And then maybe someday after she's done doing what she wants to do, um, maybe she'll get married. Maybe not. She's not really. I mean, she I know that we are. We're, we did hurting. something right because she does. She has so many things that she wants to do and, and she doesn't want to have kids of her own. She wants to adopt when the time is right. So for That's wonderful. And she's said that since she was 10, she doesn't want to have kids. She wants to adopt, um, which is awesome. So obviously we are doing some good here. Um, and for a 10 year old to have that kind of, a mindset I think is pretty awesome you know she wants to get stuff done first before she goes and and has kids and that's adopting um and I'm like yes <laughs> you know I don't think we'll ever have grandkids from my son I I just I don't because well, he doesn't you even kinda, you probably kind of hope to on account of his lack of responsibility yeah He's just not interested in in that yet. You know, he he's more about himself, and that's okay. He can stay more about himself when it comes to that area in life. Um, <laughs> so, no, no. see, Cheryl was. Were you still eighteen, Cheryl? Um, and uh, I was twenty, so I'm grateful that I was as old as I was. But, um, and what you said about doing things before you have kids, my greatest thing, um, I never regretted having Ian at 20, never for a second, but I knew when I was younger that had I been older, I would have had more to bring to the table. And that was something I really struggled with was, like I said, I didn't even really know how to make decisions yet. And there I was with the child. And we fought like we were both children. I take on the responsibility for that one. Um, but um, I, yeah, I told Ian that I grew up more in the first 18 years of his life than he did, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cheryl says, that's just a bad mom. I was young when I had my first. No way was I ready to get married and no way was her dad going to be uh, uh, compatible. compatible. No, Cheryl's with the man she's supposed to be with. It took her, she had a, a bumpy path till she found him, but she found the right guy. That's awesome. JC says, keep in mind, uh, just keep in mind, Des and Tommy, no matter what life brings you, you have to know in your heart that you did everything you felt was right or knew was right. And that, and it's, a, it's a struggle. Um, yeah. I know, Especially I know that deep tired. down. But it's it's a struggle. It really is. I don't. Yeah. If you're emotionally, mentally, physically exhausted. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Don't do something stupid for like the next eight hours. Okay. <laughs> I've got to get some sleep. Yeah. Cameras. And it sucks. <laughs> um. He says, right, I've had people try to judge me on YouTube. They don't even know me. Yeah, and and that's one thing with YouTube. I, it's. People can suck it. They don't know your life. They don't have your problems. The people that judge on YouTube, on social media. Karma. They're behind a computer. Karma. Man, that, that comes <laughs> exactly. back. Yep, yep. You know, I've, um, I've been a believer in karma for a long time. Uh, JC says, thoughts are with you both, knowing what we went through, a tough, tough pill to swallow. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, because you want the best for your children. And, um, I, and when they are teenagers, <laughs> I don't think they believe that. 
you know, the, the they. I had a neighbor once who told me about that teenagers get brain damage and that the brain damage didn't go away till they're like 23. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, wow. I remember that. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I thought that was uh, um, some good advice from her. <laughs> Something to remember. Um, Perlini says, I never wanted a dirt bag to take advantage of my son or daughter. You're telling me. I understand that one 1,000%. Yeah. When um, all my kids got to be adults and not a, one of them got did old man, that felt like an accomplishment. <laughs> um, Aunt Kelly says, I'm happy to have had my kids at 16. Now I can enjoy my grandkids. Yeah, my Aunt Kelly is only eight years older she, than me. My age, right? Uh, she's eight. I think she's eight. Yeah, she's eight years older than me. I'm 41. So she's 40. She's the same age as Tommy, 49. Okay, so um, you're older than me. And yeah. And she used to take care of me as a baby. <laughs> it's so weird saying that. <laughs> hey, my nieces. Um, so my sister's oldest granddaughter is going to be 15 this year. And it was funny. So this was when... My grandma was still alive um, when the, you know, the, the structure that I knew was still in place, basically. And when this, so, so 15 years ago, um, so my niece, she was running to the store. And so I was pacing with her baby that was rather unhappy, but I just walked around with her, talked with her, you know. And then when my niece got back, she's like, I'm so sorry. And I said, you know, I recall pacing with another baby, her. <laughs> Uh, you know, up and down grandma's hallway. <laughs> and I'm like, so it is funny as the, the generations come along. It's, you know, it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm very, very thankful. And this isn't a cut on me, so please don't take it that way. But I'm very, very, very grateful that my daughter looks so much like my mom. I do because my mom is gorgeous. You know, she is absolutely gorgeous. Too. But I don't look at myself that way. Like I look I'm told I look like my grandma, my mom's mom. My grandma, my mom's mom was a beauty pageant winner. That's how she met my grandpa. Wow. She was in a beauty contest and my grandpa and her met that way. I don't see it, but, and like I said, it's not a cut against myself. I'm just so thankful that my daughter looks like my mom because when it is my mom's time to go, I can look at my daughter and be like, you have no idea how much you look like your grandma. And that's going to bring good memories for me. Sure. By looking at my daughter because she looks so much like my mom. That's right. So now, does it sound vain? So Dwayne doesn't have any sisters. And he would make a really ugly woman. <laughs> <laughs> when I was pregnant with Natalie, I thought, please let her turn out looking like me, which she does. She's my mini me. And um, <laughs> so when she, after she's bored, Dwayne's grandma came along. And she looked at Natalie and she said, oh, good. She looks at, like you. We're just a bunch of farmer women. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. Um, JC said, we had to put cameras up, change locks. Unfortunately, it cost us our three grandbabies when he walked, too. That, Wow. Yeah, that's that's stressful and hurt the pain there. I can just I can only imagine. Um, I don't want to be a young grandma. My mom's gonna be sixty, but she looks like she's in her forties. That's my grandma is in her eighties, but looks like she's in her fifties, sixties at the most. I mean. The women in my family age gracefully, and they're gorgeous. I just don't feel like I'm aging gracefully. 
So, um, issues. Take it uh, so Aunt Kelly says she's 49, um, which is part two of what created the move to. Okay. Yeah, I understand that one. And Aunt Kelly says, I have three kids and five grand kids. See, starting out being a mother at 20, I wanted to be a young grandma. Not, you know, like I didn't want my son to have a kid at 20, but he's 28. That's fine. That's, that's, that. I did not make. Okay, so my so it's me, my brother, Rusty, and then my brother, Michael. And we all share the same mom. And so at 26, I got pregnant with my son. Or 25, I got pregnant with my son. I had him at 26. My brother, who is 22 months younger than me, Rusty, he his girlfriend at the time was pregnant with my nephew. And so she had my nephew in... Oh, crap. I'm horrible with dates. August or September. I can't remember. I'm horrible with birth dates. Um, and then March, the following, the next year, I had my son. So they're really close in age. And then she was pregnant again, my brother's girlfriend. And then I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. And then I told her that if she gets pregnant again, I'm going to kick her butt because I don't want to, we just seem to get pregnant around the same time. Yeah, I do uh, not want any more right now. Please stop. <laughs> uh, so Ian uh, was born in January, and then my brother's son was born in September of the of that same year. So yeah, we've got that. You know, my so my mother survived having four children, and for all of her struggles, she only got six grandkids out of it. Just, oh you know, wow! Times have changed. I don't know uh, if uh, my mom really enjoyed being a grandma. My Aunt Kelly says that her kids are 32, 29, 22, and her grandkids are 2, 6, 11, 11, and 15. And are your kids done having kids? I don't know. <laughs> I told my kids, There's, I I love all three of you, but only have two because three is really, really hard. And, um, and I don't think they could handle more than two. And I'm like, you know, you can only smack two at a time. And that third one's running circles around you. Yeah. You know, I, growing up, I always wanted five. I wanted four boys and one girl. I wanted my girl to be the youngest. I wanted four boys. God Blessed me with a son and daughter. And you're good. I'm good. because. And let me tell you, I kept being told, boys are easier to raise. Boys are easier to raise. Um, not in this house. They're not. <laughs> no, you know, for mine, our daughter was much easier when she was younger. She's always been sassy. But, um, oh, yeah. I um, She's told me about them. But, um uh, but then as a teenager, Natalie, uh, that sassiness, she's the only one of my children I've ever slapped. Hmm. <laughs> she was 14 at the time and we were same height by then. Uh, um, she was up in my face being sassy. It was right before we went to Cheryl's house. And then we get there and she was like, my mom slapped me and Cheryl's like, finally. The whole world was like, I can't believe your mother didn't slap you years ago. And you yes. know, she, she was never that sassy again. Sometimes you gotta be a little, a little when they get to be teenagers, put them in their place. Yeah, Jasmine only got, got slapped yeah. once. We were at, we had to go to her school because, well, we got a call. And see, this is the nice thing about the county that we live in. Um, that you're allowed to discipline your children here. Uh, not everywhere you're allowed to, I guess, but here you are. She got real mouthy and said something really slick to Tommy, and it was not appropriate, not appropriate at all. She got popped in the mouth, not hard, 
but she got popped in the mouth. The teacher in her whole classroom saw it. All the kids turned their back. The teacher shut the door and she never did it again. Yeah. That was when she you was know, younger. It's a, ch children, especially boys, sometimes they turn into these feral animals. And um, now I don't, it, it never happened to Jeremy, but, um, <laughs> and I don't know about generations now, but talking about my generation on back, I don't know a, a man that as a teenager wasn't shoved up against the wall by his father at some point for being disrespectful. Dwayne did that to, Jer to Ian once. Ian was being disrespectful to me and Dwayne just, <laughs> and he's like, you're not talking that way to your mother. And um, um, uh, so, and I think that is really a teenage boy thing that, especially if they have a father around, um, that sometimes they just got to be put in their place and I'm not talking abuse, but sometimes, you know, showing right. the family, I am not letting you do this. I'm not letting you behave this way. Sometimes that's, yep. that's just, that's an attention getter. It doesn't leave a bruise. <laughs> it's not a abuse. Right. If it's not a regular thing, it's an attention getter. Right. And like, <laughs> Joey has said some pretty nasty things that has got him his mouth smacked um and he tried to pull the oh you abused me and you know what he was told when he tried to say that we were abusing him there's no marks Just that wasn't abuse you were being disciplined and like i said i didn't spank my kids i wasn't spanked because i'm a youngest child um, which is very much a rarity for, um, for my generation. Um, oh, Dwayne always says it shows that, that I, I really didn't receive any discipline. Um, <laughs> I was a good kid. I fell into line because when you're the youngest and you want to eat, you do. But, um, like I said, my mom worked two jobs. My father, he didn't try to be a father, which was really good. Um, and like I said, I, I never saw his approval. I'm so grateful. Um, because that would have just led to heartache. But um, real quick, hello, purple yeah. tube. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. My favorite color is purple. But yeah. um, Dwayne's an oldest child, and his father was strict. Dwayne got discipline. <laughs> um, and if you look at us now in our, I don't know now. It's been so long, but when when we were in our twenties, you could tell who had discipline and who didn't. But you know, I'm a kite. Dwayne's my rock. Um, I don't know if any amount of discipline would have changed me. JC says our kids are 26, 25, 23, 22. Grand, oh, you know that sounds like lottery numbers. Um, grandkids are eight, five, three, and three months old from our youngest son whom we uh, should be meeting in June. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, two months, he meant two months. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, and then my Aunt Kelly said that uh, she slapped all her kids at one time. Um, you know, my boys. Says, boys aren't easy, trust me. It, it just goes through different phases. But yeah, my boys, they would get a smack on the diaper, you know, as attention getters, as, you know, toddlers. Natalie never did. Um, but, um, and again, it's like, I'm talking to you here. <laughs> and just like how I said, you always say you're not going to use the term because I told you so until you have a four-year-old that is not capable of logic and you've run out of words to explain something and you just, you're going to do it. Cause I told you so. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there, there goes your whole idea of how you're going to be the perfect parent. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. We've been on for a little over an hour and a half. Uh, so yeah, I actually think, think we're going to head her out. Worse. Um, thank you, everybody, once again, for joining us tonight. Um, next week, we will try to have another topic. Um, we just got to find one. 
And <laughs> go from there. knows all of our parenting woes now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this is what it's for. You know, it's, we were talking about stressful stuff, you know, and yeah, let it be stress um, response or mental health response. But if you think about it, they're two different things, but they also interact with each other as well. And so a lot of times, a lot of stress, too long a stress can cause mental health. And mental health can be stressful. Well, and to, you know, my oldest sister told me once, you'll never try harder at anything and still feel like you're not getting it right than being a parent. And yep. she was yeah. correct. She told me this when my kids were young and she was correct. Oh, my dinner's here. Thank you, dear. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we're going to head out. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will see you next Monday, 8 p.m. Central Time. And with that, much love. And always remember, you are worth it. You are loved, and you are not alone. Um, and I will drop a link in chat Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. I go on with the Brunch Bunch now. Um, this is our awesome. little sticker. Oh, cute. I love it. Um, it's Susanna, me, Julie, and I wish this would focus, uh, Paul. Um, now, you, you're the redhead, yep. obviously. Oh, there we go. Do you, you have green eyes? I have hazel no. green, but okay, they're... I have, I have green eyes. Yep, they're hazel. They're hazel green. Um, depending on what color I put on around my eyes, depends yeah. on how much what of the green wear. pop. Yeah, green changes. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, my so, answer, um, green let me gold pull up pot. that real quick. We're a part of the 2% club with our eyes, and you're a part of the 2% club with your hair. And then all three of my kids have green eyes, which is a rarity. Uh, no, I can't. Susanna, are you still in chat? <laughs> if not, I'll put it down in the description below for the brunch bunch. Um, because I can't seem to get it pulled up now. Um, yep, I have the dark red with the hazel green eyes. Yeah, that's the combo not, not I was born with. Common. And we didn't pass on. You know, Dwayne didn't pass on his red hair, but he did pass on his sensitive skin. <laughs> My daughter's got the sensitive skin <laughs> with the red in her hair. <laughs> you can literally get sunburned walking to the mailbox. Yeah, I can relate. I can't say nothing. <laughs> oh, there it is. I found it. Um, so, oops. So this is Paul Antonelli's channel. And this is where we have the brunch bunch show. So if you guys could show the love to the channel, if you're not already, um, then I also still put it down in the description below. Um, that would be awesome if you could show the love. Um, with that, we'll bid you farewell and have a great night, everybody.